Why the African Savanna Turns Animals into Predators Imagine an endless golden plain under a blazing sun, seemingly calm and quiet. Suddenly, a rustle in the tall grass betrays a hidden drama. A sprinting antelope zigzags frantically as a lioness explodes into pursuit. The African savanna may look peaceful at noon, but don't be fooled, it's a factory for predators. Why do so many creatures here, from big cats to birds and even lizards, become hunters or masters of escape? What is it about this land of heat and dust that forges almost every animal into either a killer or a clever survivor? Let's start and find out. The Savannah's Challenge Welcome to the African savanna, a place of extremes that pushes every creature to its limits. By day, the sun scorches the earth with an unforgiving heat. Many predators and prey adapt by being active at dawn or dusk, avoiding the midday oven. The openness of the savanna is both a blessing and a curse. With its vast, flat grasslands, there's almost nowhere to hide. Prey can spot a stalking predator from far away, but predators, in turn, can see their quarry clear as day across the plain. In this wide-open area, being fast or being smart is literally a matter of life and death. Scarcity is the next challenge. In the dry season, food and water become painfully rare. Herds of antelope and zebra wander for miles to find green pastures, and they all must crowd at dwindling water holes to drink. For predators, this scarcity is a chance and a trial. The savanna has clear, wet, and dry seasons, almost like two different worlds. In the wet season, life explodes. Grasses grow tall, prey animals fatten up, and there's plenty to eat. In the dry season, the land turns dusty brown, rivers shrink, and hunger sets in. Only the most adaptable will make it through until the rains return. Some animals migrate to better areas. Others, like opportunistic omnivores, switch up their diet to whatever they can find. Apex Predators on the Prowl Let's meet the savanna's most famous hunters and see how this environment has shaped them into the ultimate predators. First up, the lion, often called king of beasts. Lions actually owe a lot of their success to teamwork. In the savanna's open landscape, sneaking up on a fast antelope is tough for one cat alone. So lions live in prides and hunt cooperatively. One lioness might crouch low, creeping forward, while others circle to flank their target. With a well-timed burst from their powerful legs, they ambush their prey in a coordinated attack. Even with these advantages, a lion's hunt isn't guaranteed. Lions only succeed about 30% of the time, believe it or not. Still, the savanna's openness has made lions strong and strategic. They've learned to use the tall grass as cover and to work as a squad, increasing their chances to bring down a meal. Now, meet the spotted hyena, an animal often misunderstood as just a scavenger. In reality, hyenas are formidable hunters, with survival skills honed by the savanna's challenges. Hyenas live in large clans led by females, and they're experts in both patience and persistence. When prey is plentiful, hyenas might gorge on a carcass. But when prey is scarce or strong, hyenas show off incredible stamina. They've been known to chase wildebeest or zebras for miles. Not super fast, but long enough to exhaust their target. And if they didn't make the kill themselves, no problem. Hyenas are expert opportunists. They'll boldly steal leftovers from lions or wild dogs when they can, using numbers and nerve to scare off other predators. Now we have the unsung heroes of cooperative hunting, African wild dogs, also known as painted wolves. These lean, long-legged canines are built for endurance hunting in the open savanna. In a habitat with little cover, wild dogs don't rely on ambush, they rely on stamina and teamwork. This strategy is so effective that wild dogs are arguably the most successful hunters on the savanna, with a kill success rate around 80% vastly higher than lions. How do they coordinate so well? Wild dogs are highly social and communicate constantly, with yips, whines, and even sneezes. And of course, we cannot forget the cheetah, the savanna's famous speed demon. In the wide open plains where the nearest cover might be a lone acacia tree or a clump of grass, 
cheetahs evolved an insane burst of speed to catch prey. We're talking 0 to 60 miles per hour in just a few seconds, faster than a sports car, and topping out around 70 miles per hour in short spurts. But that speed comes with trade offs. Cheetahs have small heads and relatively slim jaws. They can't risk getting into brawls with tougher predators, so they hunt in daylight more often when lions are snoozing, and they rely on surprise. A cheetah will use whatever cover it can. It will creep up close as possible to an unsuspecting gazelle and then explode in a blur of spots. If it hasn't got the prey in about 20 seconds, the cheetah has to give up. Its body will overheat, and its muscles quickly exhaust. These apex predators each found a unique solution to the challenges of heat, openness, and periods of hunger. They are very different animals, but they all share one thing. In the African savanna, only the resourceful and relentless thrive. No easy meals It's time to look at the other side of the coin, the prey animals. In a land that creates top-notch predators, you can bet the prey have had to up their game too. The savanna doesn't let you stay soft. Even the herbivores here have evolved strategies that can be pretty hardcore. Warthogs know how to avoid becoming a meal themselves. Their home is often an abandoned aardvark burrow, a nice roomy hole in the ground. When danger comes, a warthog will sprint for its burrow and dive in rear first. Why butt first? Because those sharp curved tusks point outward at the entrance, ready to stab any predator foolish enough to reach in after them. Now, let's talk about the quintessential savanna speedsters, the antelope. The term antelope covers many species – gazelles, impalas, wildebeest, etc. – but whether small or large, they all share a common challenge – avoid those toothy predators. In the open savanna, antelopes have evolved several impressive tricks. Speed is the most obvious. Many antelope can run 40 to 60 miles per hour in bursts, which rivals or even exceeds their predator's speeds. Cheetahs are faster off the line, but if the gazelle can keep sprinting and zigzagging for just half a minute, the cheetah will overheat and have to quit. Lions are fast too, but lions lack endurance. They're sprinters like the cheetah. Antelopes exploit that by making the chase go long. Keen senses and group living round out the antelope's defensive toolkit. Most antelopes have large ears that swivel around picking up the faintest snap of a twig. Many species live in herds and there's great safety in numbers. To a hunting lion, it's like a magic trick. Now you see a herd, now suddenly there's chaos and it's hard to focus on one target. And not all antelopes just run. Some will fight if they must. Sable antelopes, for instance, have been known to turn their long, scimitar-like horns on attacking lions, sometimes injuring or killing the big cat in the process. Sky Hunters Predators aren't only on four legs out here. Some come on two legs and two wings. The African savanna has its share of feathered predators, and they've developed some astonishing adaptations to rule the skies. If you've ever seen a secretary bird, you might do a double take. When it spots a snake, it doesn't hesitate. With lightning speed, the secretary bird stomps its prey to death. Yes, stomps as in karate kicks the snake with rapid-fire stomps from its powerful legs. One well-placed kick can crush a snake's skull or break its spine, ending the fight before the snake can even strike back. Now, cast your eyes upward, and you might spot a dark silhouette soaring high against the blue African sky. With a wingspan up to 7.5 feet, it soars on thermal currents, barely needing to flap as it scans the ground far below. How far? Well. Its eyesight is about eight times sharper than a human's, meaning it can spot a mongoose or a guinea fowl from over a kilometer away. When a martial eagle walks onto a target, it goes into a dive, and here comes the savanna's openness to aid the eagle. Its huge, strong talons spread out, hitting like four knuckle dusters. Martial eagles have been known to knock down and kill prey as large as small antelope or baboons. Cold-blooded hunters We've seen predators from land and air, but what about those that lurk in water or slither on the ground? When dry season grips the savanna and rivers shrink to muddy pools, every creature from antelope to baboons must visit the remaining water holes to drink. This is the Nile crocodile's moment. Crocodiles have been around since the age of dinosaurs, and it shows. 
They are perfect ambush predators built for patience and power. A Nile crocodile can be over 5 meters long, a true giant reptile. They float like logs, utterly still, just waiting. When a thirsty wildebeest or zebra steps to the water's edge, the croc can explode into action with shocking speed. The crocodile's bite is one of the strongest of any animal on Earth, easily crushing bone. It often drags prey into the water, performing a ghastly death roll to subdue and drown it. On the smaller side, but no less interesting, is the monitor lizard. This lizard is like a reptilian jack-of-all-trades. It's usually a bit shy, dashing into the water or up a tree if threatened, but when it comes to food, monitors are bold and highly opportunistic predators. A Nile monitor prowls both land and water. A favorite treat for Nile monitors is raiding nests. They love to steal eggs. A crafty monitor lizard might work in a pair. One distracts the mother croc by getting her to chase it, while the other quickly digs up the buried eggs and gobbles them. Teamwork and cunning in lizards. Who knew? This is a great example of how the savanna environment pushes animals into creative strategies. The Future – Predators of the Savanna a Million Years From Now Having seen how the African savanna molds its inhabitants today, we can't help but wonder, what about the future? One thing's for sure, the arms race between predators and prey will continue. Prey animals might get even faster or more elusive, so predators must answer in kind. Perhaps we'd see a cheetah 2.0, maybe slightly larger with more muscular legs for sustained speed, or with better heat dissipation to chase longer without overheating. Or maybe cheetahs could become smaller and even faster, focusing on tinier prey that's abundant to avoid competing with larger carnivores. What about lions and hyenas? They're already incredibly good at what they do, but nothing in evolution stays static. In a million years, maybe lions might evolve more efficient cooling mechanisms to handle the heat. Perhaps bigger ears to act as radiators or thinner fur for heat release so they can afford to be active a bit longer in the day. Then there are the African wild dogs. With their high hunting success, one could envision them spreading into new niches. Could we one day see wild dog packs that hunt more like wolf packs in the Ice Age did, taking down super herbivores? If the savanna a million years from now has, say, larger antelope or even elephantine creatures, perhaps a subset of wild dogs could evolve to be bigger, with stronger jaws. What if new predators emerged entirely? Perhaps some herbivores could turn omnivorous or carnivorous over time. Baboons and other monkeys already eat small animals on occasion. In a harsher future savanna, maybe a baboon-like primate could become a true predator, sort of like a savvy, intelligent hunter in groups, basically a non-human primate that fills a wild dog or hyena niche. Or consider birds. Could something like a secretary bird evolve into an even more terrifying form? Perhaps a larger, flightless bird of prey, like a terror bird rerun stalking the savanna if the environment favored it. On the reptile side, if the climate stays warm or even gets warmer, perhaps crocodiles or monitors could diversify. We might see a true land crocodile species re-emerge. Imagine a slightly more agile croc cousin that doesn't need water as much. It could fill a predator role akin to big cats if mammals struggled. The savanna's future predators will depend heavily on the savanna's future environment, a one constant where there is opportunity, life will adapt to seize it. The savanna has always been about opportunity born from adversity. Droughts that concentrate prey for crocs, distances that reward speed, sparse cover that rewards cooperation and intelligence. In a million years, I'd bet on the savanna producing even more astonishing hunters. Evolution is full of surprises.